This is Katherine Schmer, and we're here to discuss curvature and normal vectors of a curve. We'll start with the principal unit normal vector, capital N, which is normal to the tangent vector and points in the direction in which the curve is turning. So the formula for capital N is basically the derivative of the unit tangent vector divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent vector. So there's two ways to write this. You could say capital T prime of lowercase t divided by the magnitude of capital T prime of lowercase t. Or you could write d capital T over d lowercase t divided by the magnitude of d capital T over d lowercase t. So either way of writing the, the um, unit normal formula is correct, but just remember in your mind that it's the derivative of the unit tangent divided by the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent. So basically if I have some random curve in three dimensions, then the unit tangent vector capital T is going to point in the direction of the curve and have a length of one because it's a unit, and the unit normal vector will point into the curve and have a length of 1, and they will be at a 90 degree angle um, to each other. So if my curve was a circle, the unit normal would be pointing into um, the circle, so towards the center of the circle. The curvature, which we use a Greek letter kappa for, so the curvature kappa of a curve is the rate at which the unit tangent vector capital T turns per unit length of the curve. So in other words, curvature is the rate at which the curve changes direction. So let's think about what this actually means in terms of a formula. So I would have kappa equals the rate at which the unit tangent vector turns per unit length of the curve. So I'm going to have d capital T over ds, ds being the change in arc length. And <clears throat> because I'm just looking for a rate that this happens at, I take the magnitude. So kappa equals the magnitude of d capital T over ds. Now from um, from the last section, we know that the arc length, s of t, is equal to the integral from some fixed value a to variable t of the magnitude of v of u du. So we take our velocity function, plug in a u, take the magnitude, and then integrate that from some constant to the variable t. Now, from the fundamental theorem of calculus, if I take the derivative of that integral, I'm going to get ds equals the magnitude of v of t times dt. So, remember the derivative of an integral is just whatever your integrand was evaluated at the variable upper bound of your um, integration. So ds equals the magnitude of vt dt. And substituting this into our kappa equals magnitude of d capital T over ds, I would get kappa equals the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent divided by the magnitude of the derivative of position. So more commonly, the way you'll see it written is kappa equals 1 over the magnitude of velocity times the magnitude of the derivative of the unit tangent. And that's the um, formula that I'm going to use as we do our calculations in the coming videos. So kappa equals the magnitude of d capital T over d lowercase t divided by the magnitude of velocity. Now because the formula only involves magnitudes, 
Curvature, kappa, is always a scalar function, not a vector function. So it could still involve variables, but it's not going to be a vector. It's going to be a single um, formula or expression. Now, um, thinking about the curvature, we have an oval here that looks like it crosses the x-axis at negative 2 and positive 2 and crosses the y-axis at negative 3 and positive 3 and it's an ellipse and we want to know at which point is the curvature maximal and at which point is it minimal for the given graph. So remember curvature is the change, the rate of change in the unit tangent over some arc length. So I'm going to start at the positive y-intercept, so at 0, 3. I'll draw a unit tangent vector. I'll call it capital T sub 1. So at the y-intercept, it's horizontal. Then I go a little bit along my curve, draw another unit tangent vector. I'll call it capital T sub 2. And the arc length there is ds. So you can see, as we changed points on the curve, the direction of our capital T of our unit tangent has changed very quickly. It went from almost horizontal, or maybe exactly horizontal, to pointing down fairly steeply, um, just a little distance along the curve. And so this would tell me that maximum curvature is at the y-intercepts. And notice, just looking at the curve, that's the tightest part of the curve. So your maximum curvature will always be at the tightest part of your curve because the more change um, in direction is occurring there. Now let's think about the minimum curvature. At the negative x-intercept, um, at negative 2, 0, I'll draw a unit tangent vector pointing up, so that's t sub 1. And then just a little bit along the curve, so a distance of ds, I'll draw another unit tangent vector, t sub 2. Now both of these are almost vertical, so the unit tangent has not changed direction very much over that same distance, ds. And so we would say the minimum curvature is at the x-intercepts, and that's the straightest part of the curve. So that's kind of intuitively how you measure curvature. It will be a maximum at the tightest part of your curve and a minimum at the straightest part of your curve. Now there's one more concept that I want to cover in this video, and that's the unit binormal vector. Capital B equals the unit tangent crossed with the unit normal. It is normal to both the unit tangent and the unit normal and measures the tendency of the particle's motion to twist out of the plane created by T and N in the direction perpendicular to the plane. So we have this plane in three dimensions created by the two vectors, the unit tangent and the unit normal. And then we have this curve which is um, going to touch the plane at whatever point we're um, using the unit tangent and unit normal at. And the binormal is going to point out of that plane and tell us how likely the particle is to twist out of the TN plane. So that's our unit binormal. So now we have our definitions for the unit tangent, the principal unit normal, curvature, and the binormal. And in coming videos, we'll do some calculations with those.